Good morning. Welcome to your Sunday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum here with some words of wisdom to start your day, get you thinking about some things. And this particular card, I'm actually going to come at it from a couple of different directions. So whatever aspect kind of resonates for you, run with it. Let me grab a drink here. Ah, there, that's better. Heat was running a lot last night, so it's dry in here. So, wait for a couple of my peeps to pop on. Oh, there's first person. Welcome to whomever just popped on. Glad you're here. Another one. Awesome. Names aren't rolling yet. There we go. Abigail. Good morning, Abigail. Good morning, Joe and Neil. Yes, rise and shine. I'm feeling shiny this morning. How about you? Good morning, Cindy. Welcome. And Mel. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everybody rolling in here from my tribe of practical rebels. Glad you are here. So, our card today gives us something to think about in both uh, um, do I need to do some healing around this for myself way, but also in a, do I need to change my perspective on how I'm looking at this way. There, how is that for a long sentence? <laughs> but we've actually moved on for the moment. Good morning, Gwen. Welcome. Glad you're here. Moved on for the moment from the um, Pilgrim Cards deck, and we have the Wild Offering deck by Tosh Silver. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's do some breathing just to kind of prep ourselves, get ourselves into the appropriate mindset to receive this message. So, some nice deep belly breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Filling up your abdomen fully, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Wiggling a little bit, shaking off the night, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Making room for Sunday morning wisdom here. So, as always, going to start with the back of the card, Ganesh, the overcomer of obstacles. Good morning, Beth. Welcome. Glad you are here. The overcomer of obstacles. And as I've been saying for a bit now, last couple of weeks, reframing obstacles as opportunities. There's a reason that seeming barrier is in your way. And what do you want to do with it? What's it there to teach you? How is it going to hone you so that moving forward, the things you face, good morning, Bobby, good morning, Diane, welcome, welcome, the things you face get faced through a more educated lens, right? When we look at something as an opportunity to learn something that's going to help us move forward better, as opposed to something that's in our way, everything changes. <clears throat> And that's kind of the same for this card. I'm thinking as we look at it through some different lenses, everything will change. So the card itself is loneliness. Loneliness. So what are your first thoughts when you think loneliness? What comes to mind for you? For me, being a champion of aloneness, I like my alone time and my quiet, etc., Loneliness to me is a <clears throat> different animal than aloneness. To me, aloneness is having solitude, having quiet time to yourself. Loneliness can happen in a crowd, actually. Loneliness is when you feel disconnected from those around you. Interestingly, we talk in recent years about the, the, the epidemic of loneliness, especially among, among seniors, living in a house by yourself, not having contact with people during the course of the week, etc. Loneliness, being disconnected from others. So my, my intentional community idea, one of the reasons I feel that's a good route to go is it addresses loneliness. People are brought together, whether it's for common meals, whether it's to work on specific tasks or chores together, whether it's to serve on different committees together, but people are brought together. The mail room, instead of having a mailbox on your house, you go to the mail room. You're likely to run into somebody there, have a conversation, etc. So one tactic for addressing the loneliness that's running rampant at this point. But let me read the card, and I want you to just listen with that intuitive part of yourself. How does this fit for you, and how might this serve you as you change your perspective? 
When you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. May I embrace and love my solitude. And that's when kindred spirits can finally come. So <clears throat> one of the first things that popped into my head as I read the card was walking to high school one day. I must have been like a freshman or a sophomore, didn't have a car, was walking to high school and loads of kids walk in the same direction. And one girl saying to a friend of hers, well, my boyfriend isn't really that great, but I think I'm going to hang on to him because um, there's, there's no one else, you know, kind of knocking on her door. Settling. Settling for a less than ideal partnership. Yes, it's high school, but nonetheless, you, you are creating your patterns early, right? Settling for someone that wasn't a good fit for her. Probably he was a fine guy. He just was not matched up well with her. He would have been better off with someone else. But she's going to hang on just because she doesn't think anybody else is going to come along. Recipe for loneliness, right? A recipe for loneliness. How many people do you know are in marriages that are less than ideal? And part of the problem is because they're willing to settle the other person and I'm not going to say it's always him a lot of times it's her too or both of them they're not bringing their a game to the marriage and the other partner is willing to settle for that and so what do you get mediocrity mediocrity <clears throat> same for work if we have a boss who does not expect excellence from us we tend to put out less than excellent work. So we have to look at the whole picture. We can't just look at one party in an interaction and say it's his fault or it's her fault. Oftentimes, both people have responsibility for how mediocre something has become, all right? The value in believing that, the value in knowing everybody brings their their contribution to the mediocrity is everybody then has the opportunity to make a change to that. Okay, I'm going to up level my game here. And if we end up with an inequity, that may be where we're going to have the crucial conversation. We're going to do some of the stuff in the, the Sharon Ellison book. We're going to make a point of addressing what isn't working and moving into what is working or leaving the relationship. Good morning, Tracy. Glad you are here. Welcome, welcome. So when you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. If you are willing to have someone leave, you're setting up the groundwork for a much more vibrant, positive life. Okay, and again, for a lot of us, that runs counterintuitive. That runs counterintuitive. We're like, well, no, if people are leaving me, it's gonna suck. I'm gonna be alone. <laughs> Rethink that. Rethink that. When I am willing to bless someone on their way because they are not a good match or they are not bringing their A game to a situation, I open a vacuum. And we all know. Nature abhors a vacuum. So the universe is going to fill that up with something or somebody. Interesting to note, this was noted in some of the um, articles on intentional community. Oftentimes, one of the biggest conflict points in an intentional community is the pet policy. How are we going to deal with the animals? What they often find over time is as people get more connected to other people, they feel less and less of a need to have multiple animals. So they may pare it down from, I came in with four dogs and I currently have one dog and that's quite enough, thank you. Not saying that we want to not take care of the animals, saying that when we begin to forge good human relationships, we're demanding less that the animals fill that role for us. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. So, let me read the card again. Loneliness. When you stop fearing your aloneness, you stop settling for less than you deserve. May I embrace and love my solitude. And that's when kindred spirits can finally come. So when we have a balance, and is that balance 
the same for everybody? No. Is that balance 50-50, aloneness and with others? No. Different people have different set points with regard to that. There are people who are very comfortable having a lot of solitude. Thank you, Cindy, for posting that. I appreciate it. Um, and there are people who need a lot of people time. Oftentimes they're married to each other. <laughs> and so a useful thing to do is if you're in a community, the person who needs to be peopled a whole lot can go and be peopled. And the person who needs to be peopled much less, who needs the alone time, the solitude, can do that more and may choose tasks. Like in an intentional community, say the rule of thumb is everybody puts in 10 hours of community service per month. That person may pick the community service projects mowing the lawn. You usually can't talk a whole lot to people when you're mowing the lawn. The person who prefers solitude might be the lawnmower. <laughs> The person who prefers people might be the, the person who's going to put together the team that's going to make the next community meal. It accommodates whoever you are and wherever you are. I will say one thing. Sometimes we have to work through our past traumas to really find out how much of an alone person or how much of a people person am I really? Have I been engaging in aloneness as a way to not have to deal with people because I've been hurt in the past? If that's the case, if you're honest with yourself and that's the case, then some healing needs to occur. Fixable issue, fixable issue, all right? So that is our card for today. I'd like you to spend some time thinking about aloneness and loneliness, where you're at on that continuum, are you settling for something that's less than wonderful because you're afraid to be alone, etc., etc., etc.? Take a look at this. Do some journaling. Let's see what comes up. So, and if you decide, yeah, this is a problem, but I don't know what to do about it, I rarely pitch my coaching services, but I'm going to pitch my coaching services here. I do three session coaching packages. I do eight session coaching packages. You can find information about that at empowerment and purpose, all little letters, all together, dot com. Empowerment and purpose under the services tab is where you'll see what I offer. And then I do a free 20 minute Zoom call with you to talk about what you read there, what you like, what you what we what would you be looking for in terms of coaching, how much your investment is, what do you get for your investment, all that happy stuff. So if you're interested in taking a swing through that, empowermentandpurpose.com services tab. So for today, again, what I want you doing is taking a candid look at your loneliness. Are you lonely or are you merely alone? Do you enjoy your alone time? Do you need to connect more with people? What's going on there? What do you need some guidance with? So have an awesome Sunday. I will see you again tomorrow. Remember, you're capable of far more than you think you are. Bye-bye.